Hello, I'm Will. This is Mike. We're the Tabletop Donkeys. Hello. And we're back. And Michael has recovered yeah. from the blessings of Grandfather Nerdle, yeah. fortunately. Yeah. Luckily, the Emperor protects. Yeah. Shrugged off whatever he tried to bless me with. Thank you for uh, uh, the kind comments people left on the, the update video William put out. Mostly fixed now. And we're back on schedule. Uh, and another announcement. If you're into Warhammer Age of Sigma, we've also started a series on Age of Sigma Mortal Realms magazine, which is basically this, but for Age of Sigma. So if you're interested in that, then do check it out. There'll be a link up above or in the description. Uh, but this issue of Conquest, issue 72, we got two Chaos Spawn. As always, if you want to skip straight to the battle report, you can do so via the timecode in the description below. But having a look inside the issue, we've got stuff about Chaos Spawn, funnily enough. Horribly mutated people or animals or whatever that have been oversaturated with the power of Chaos. Quite often a consequence of people trying to take in the powers of Chaos too quickly and the gods having the last laugh and turning them into some sort of mutated horrible thing. All sorts of weird, like, limbs, spines poking out everywhere. I mean, they can pretty much look like anything, to be honest, because it's chaos. And then there's some here, as it says, the price of failure. If you're yeah, evoking the displeasure of the gods is also not a good idea. You might simply end up as an avenue beast. Then we move on to the gene stealer cults. These are essentially uh, the result of gene stealers infiltrating a human society and basically laying eggs inside a human and then it creates hybrid gene stealers uh, of varying sorts and these insidious threats remain hidden in imperial society until they're ready to rise up, often with the approach of a Tyranid hive fleet which has been drawn to the world by the bloodshed. There's the hierarchy there of a cult and the patriarch leading it, gigantic gene stealer and various generations of hybrids that look more or less like humans depending on how far they are through the cycle. And here's their model showcase as the patriarch and all of their leaders and here's a variety of different warriors, different kinds of gene stealer hybrid and also some vehicles that they appropriate from imperial armories or mining vehicles, all sorts of things, whatever they can get their hands on. Then we have the Space Marine Stormhawk Interceptor, which is a flyer that is, well, it's an interceptor. It's for shooting down other flyers. So a high, high speed, uh, decent armor and firepower. And there's some famous ones over the page. Now we're on to the build guide for our Chaos Spawn. The sprue, as you can see, comes with a huge number of components, all sorts of limbs, spines, heads, eyes, all, all sorts of things to make them look completely mutated beyond reason. And some parts are not to use for this magazine because they are to do with different Chaos Gods and not... Nurgle, so it recommends not using various parts. Yeah, so I, I built ours as they were the magazine. Really can't really go wrong with Chaos Spawn. Just put whatever you want and make them as weird as you want them. So. And then onto the painting guide, it's pretty much, well, you can paint them wherever you want as well because. Uh, I painted one green and one flesh colour just to make them look different, but uh, probably really just paint them any, any colour you want. And then they've got some suggestions on how to paint, for example, the fly parts to the one of the spawn and then how to paint big eyeball for one with a big eyeball. That's it for our issue rundown, and we'll move on to the game now, which obviously features the Chaos Spawn themselves. So, before we get into our mission, we've got some more backstory here. We've got to the ongoing story of Governess Ludmilla Tarch. And as you see here that she and her trusted military advisor fell to chaos long before the Death Guard arrived as a plague hit Corvon II. Right now, they've set up this set of ritual sites and are attempting a ritual to achieve demonhood. But unfortunately for them, the Space Marines detected the ritual and have arrived and disrupted it. And unfortunately for the Governess and the General, they've been turned into hideous chaos spawn as they try to fail in the ritual. So, as we said, so we're heading to a mission hunt the spawn as the Space Marines realise that the Chaos Spawn, uh, even though they're barely sentient slavering monstrosities, are still uh, sort of martyrs for the Chaos cause and are sort of a powerful rallying point for the cultists, so they should be exterminated without mercy. Battlefield here, we've got the three battle mats set on a line. And you can see on the leftmost battle map, the line where the Death Guard move on, we have a six inch diameter ritual site in the middle of the map, and then the three hatches around it, which the Death Guard can use to deploy infantry from later in the game. And the Space Marines have a six inch deployment zone on the opposite side of the map. For our armies, uh, each side has to have a, bat a battleforged army with a max power rating of 40, but the, the Death Guard have to include the two Chaos Spawn and the Cultists. So the Death Guard deploy the Chaos Spawn and the Cultists in the ritual site, so that's the six inch zone there. 
and the space marines deploy. So it says deploy all their units in their deployment zone, but um, the way we interpret that is that units like scouts and units that can be deployed elsewhere can also be, do that. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but that's the way we're going to play it. We've done that before. Then the remaining Death Guard units uh, move on to the battle map at the start of the first Death Guard turn, and infantry units can move on from the hatches as well as the board edge. And the space marines get to go first. And for our victory conditions, so you get a victory point for eliminating an enemy unit, victory point for eliminating the Warlord. Uh, if both Chaos Spawn are killed, the Space Marines player gets three victory points, while the Death Guard player gains a victory point for each model slain by a Chaos Spawn. So that's, if they can get into melee, it could be pretty deadly, and the game lasts for five battle rounds. And obviously we've got our data sheet for our new Chaos Spawn. So they're a fast attack choice, that costs two power, and a unit contains one Chaos Spawn, but you can include up to four additional Chaos Spawn with an extra two power each, so one to five. Movement 7, so if it's actually reasonably fast compared to the other Death Guard stuff. Weapon skill 4 plus, no ballistic skill, so they can't shoot any guns. Strength 5, toughness 5, 4 wounds. D6 attacks, so when they get into melee, you roll a D6 for each spawn in melee, and that's how many attacks they get. Leadership 9, 5 plus save, and they've only got to their melee weapons, which are strength user, AP minus 2, 2 damage. Yeah, so they're pretty scary, so they actually lower the leadership of any unit with an inch of them by 1. The other thing they have, because they're so horribly mutated, they get a bonus that applies to the whole unit if they enter melee. So you roll a d3, if you get a 1, they become AP-4 for their melee weapons. If you roll a 2, they get an extra 2 attacks each. And on a 3, uh, you can re-roll failed wound rolls. So they're pretty dangerous in melee. Other than that, the only thing to note is they don't have disgustingly resume and no invulnerable save either. So they're actually going to be quite fragile compared to your other Death Guard units. Uh, the other main thing to note is that they have the beast keyword and not the infantry keyword. Basically that just means they have to move around ruins, I think, is the only thing that might come up. And uh, they can't play Cloud of Flies on them because they're not infantry and that sort of thing. But it's just a thing to note, just don't assume they're infantry even though they're bipedal. Well with that, uh, we'll go and look at the armies we've come up with and go into the game. So here's the Space Spring army I've come up with. It adds up to 40 power and it's a patrol detachment. So we've got the captain in cataphracty armor, the lieutenant with the auto bolt rifle, got a squad of five intercessors, the land speeder, a, the squad of scouts with sniper rifles and a missile launcher, and the inceptors. So I'm gonna take the inceptors because we haven't seen them for a while. And my plan is to try and uh, take out the spawn straight away, basically by deploying the scouts and the inceptors within range, while the land speeder, the intercessors and the lieutenant move up from the board because we start actually start quite far away from the death guard. And the captain will be my warlord, and I'm going to give him the Storm of Fire trait. So here's the Death Guard army William has come up with. We have Lord Felthius, the Foul Blight Spawn, and we have the two Chaos Spawn and the ten Cultists that he has to take for the mission. A unit of five Plague Marines with a champion with a plasma gun and power fist, and two Blight Launchers in the squad, and the, um, the Icon of Despair. And we have the Tainted Cohort. Uh, we haven't seen them for a while, mainly because they're so expensive. But that is, comes to 40 power and it is a patrol detachment. No, it's 39 power, sorry. It doesn't specify whether you have to take the spawn as a single unit or not, but I am going to take them as a single unit of two because that way they only give away one victory point. Well, three for dying, but it would be an extra victory point if they were two separate units. Um, and my warlord will be the Foul Blight Spawn, uh, who's going to take Arch Contaminator as this warlord trait. So here we have our battlefield set up for Hunt the Spawn, because we've got some cargo containers in the top left with some pipe ammo boxes. You can see the uh, Chaos Spawn and the Chaos Cultists are deployed within the uh, ritual site, so there's a six inch circle round about there. You can see the three hatches as well in the road and uh, down here with some ruins and a hematrope reactor. And then we've got the Mechanicus board in the middle with the plasma regulator and ammo boxes and pipes and things. We've got the crane being towed towards the city. Another ruin and the hematrope reactor in the top left with the other galvanic server hauler. And then we've got the spaceport mast in the right with another plasma re regulator, some barrels, the alchemite stack, and the last cargo container. So the only Death Guard units that start on the board are the spawn and the cultists. So now the space marines get to deploy, and then they get to the first turn. So I've finished my deployment. I've got the land speeder, the intercessors, and the lieutenant in my six inch deployment zone on the right hand side of the board. The scouts are going to deploy behind these ammo boxes using their uh, concealed deployment. So they're just in range of the spawn and the Terminator Captain and the Inceptors are deploying in the teleport arm or in the sky respectively. So we're on to Space Marines turn one. So first thing I'm going to do in my movement phase, the Intercessor Squad and the left hand are both going to advance. So the Intercessor Squad get to go an extra three inches and the left hand an extra one inch. So that gets the Intercessors to just be on the Alchemite stack and the left hand lagging behind a bit. But he's still within six inches of the land speeder so it's going to stay where it is for now. 
as are the scouts. So the inceptors are going to arrive behind these ammo boxes and all drums just within 18 inches of the spawn. But uh, I'm going to leave the captain in the teleportorium for now, so it's on to the shooting phase. So we're going to start the shooting phase off with the land speeder. It's going to fire two crack missiles into the chaos spawn. So we've got two shots hitting on threes. That's two hits. Wounding on threes, re-rolling ones. That's two wounds. So there's no armor save because it's taking minus two. And spawn only by five plus, so it's d6 damage. So the first missile does four damage, so it's a dead spawn. Second missile does one damage. Uh, I'll re-roll that into five. So <laughs> boom. So the spawn are instantly killed, which means I get four victory points, three victory points for killing the spawn, and one for killing an enemy unit. Well, that went very well. Next, I'll do the Inceptors. They're uh, going to put all their shots into the Cultists. So we've got 18 shots from the Inceptors, uh, hitting on threes, re-rolling ones because of the ammo boxes. And they're re-rolling these ones. Uh, so we'll hold 9, 10, 11 hits. Wounding on threes because it's strength five against toughness three. Seven wounds, seven dead cultists. Well, we're going to take away all the people with melee weapons. Leave the champion alive in case he might pass the arrow test. Three cultists remaining. Uh, finally, we've got the scouts. They're the only people left to shoot. And they're also going to shoot at the cultists. So we'll fire a frag missile and the four sniper rifles. So the frag missile has D6 shots. Oops, six. Hitting on threes, rolling ones. Five hits in total. Wounding on threes, because strength four is toughness three. That's four wounds. I do get an armor save though. Four six plus armor Watch saves. All the sixes. Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> so the cultists are wiped out. And that'll be another victory point for all the Space Marines. That'll be the end of my turn. On to Death Guard turn one. Well, that didn't go so well, but I'm not going to concede without even trying to play the game because I could still kill enough Space Marine units to pull off a win. My Plague Marines and Foul Blight Spawn can come out these hatches. So we'll start with the Foul Blight Spawn who will advance. An extra one inch. So the spawner gets himself to there, he's in range of the Inceptors with his uh, squirty thing. And the Plague Marines have just moved on normally from the hatch so they can charge if they need yeah. to. And then at the end of the movement phase we'll bring down all the Terminators uh, here. We're nine inches away from the Intercessors. Right, just on the other side of the crane there. And nine inches away from the Scouts as well. And then we'll be on to the shooting phase. We'll start with the Foul Blight Spawn, shoot the inter Inceptors because it's the only thing in range. So strength of 2d6. Six, six that'll do. D6 hits. Three. Uh, these are winning on threes and re-rolling everything thanks to his wall trait. So re-rolling that two gives me three wounds. So yeah, from the foul blight spawn's perspective, I don't think this inceptor is technically within cover. He's not within an inch of the barrels and the uh, boxes aren't blocking him. So I don't technically think I don't get any cover at all. So we're going to have three six plus armor saves. Oh, I made one. Sarge lives. Three damage apiece, so two Inceptors die, and the Sergeant lives. Now we've got shooting for the Plague Marines. We're going to put the um, Plasma Gun and the Bolt Guns into the Inceptor Sergeant, and the Blight Launchers into the Scouts, because they're just about in range. Start with the Plasma Gun, I'm not going to supercharge it, so just two shots on threes. Good thing I didn't supercharge. One hit, wounding on a three. And I got a five, which is a success. Yes. Because of my plus one from the cover safety. Yeah. Uh, now we've got Bolt Guns, so four shots. One hit. Wow. Well, Ruining one of five. Nope. And now for the light launchers at the scouts. So four shots on threes. Three hits. Ruining on threes but re-rolling everything thanks to the wall on tree. I can re-roll that one anyway. It's three wounds. Minus two. So that's uh, three four plus armor saves because we've got plus two from our, two from our cover save because of our camo cloaks. Hmm. We made all of them. And now I've got the terminators so we'll shoot the two combi bolters at the scouts as well who won't be in cover from this angle. So eight shots hitting on threes, not be rolling. So six hits, moving on fours, and five. Ooh. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to roll three armor saves for the three scouts who aren't in cover, and if they all die, uh, these two will then be in cover and then they'll have a higher armor save. Doesn't mean I might lose the missile launcher. Three, four pluses for the guys in the open. Ooh, so that's two die, so the um, two snipers will die. Then we've got two more armor saves for the missile launcher. Yeah, or you roll them one at a time. Yeah, I'll do them one at a time. Yeah. So four plus, saved. Four plus. No. Nope. I'll re-roll that. Now he dies. So, so the two snipers and the missile launcher die. And then uh, we will declare a charge with, we'll start with the tainted cohort into the intercessors. Okay, so we'll overwatch with our bolt rifles. Ten shots hitting on sixes. None at all. 
and needing a nine for the char troll. That's a six. No, I, I'm not going to re-roll for the sake of a six. So we'll try again, but with Lord Felthius. Ten shots hitting on sixes. And we got one this time. Wounding on a five, re-rolling ones because of the lieutenant. Oh, it's wounded. Two plus armor save because the crane gives him cover. Yeah. And then his charge roll is a six. Yeah, I think we'll, mm, we're going to go for the five plus. It's risky, but kind of at that point already in the game. <laughs> we're rolling looking for a five. No, that's a three. And we've got the Plague Marines who will try and charge that Inceptor Sergeant. Yeah, so hello, Overwatch. Six shots hitting on sixes. Oh, two. Wounding on fours. Two wounds. Um, four plus armor save. I'll make those. Okay. And then they need a seven inch charge, which they didn't get. Okay, so that'll be the end of Death Guard turn one. No morale checks for any of the Space Marines because we didn't take enough casualties. On to Space Marines turn two. So in my movement phase, the Intercessor Squad and the Lieutenant is going to fall back a bit, so we're just within 15 inches of the uh, Tainted Cohort. Well, the two remaining scouts are going to stay where they are. The Inceptor Sergeant's going to advance, so he gets to go an extra three inches. That's probably enough to get him where he needs to go. Yeah, so with advancing, his movement is enough to get him on top of the Thermic Plasma Regulator. Finally, at the end of the turn, the Captain Terminator armor is going to arrive just behind the Intercessors, so to give his aura to the Land Speeder, them and the Lieutenant. So that's all my movement, on to the shooting phase. So I'll start with the two snipers. They're going to shoot at the Foul Blight Spawn, because uh, they can shoot their sniper arms at characters, even, though they're, even if they're not the closest enemy unit. So I've got two shots hitting on threes, rolling ones. They're rolling that one into a hit, so two hits. Wounding on fives, sixes also cause a mortal wound. Oh, so there's one wound and a mortal wound. So the normal wound, get an armor save. Three plus. Yes, so just a foot to five plus, disgusting resilient for mortal wound. No. He's down to three wounds. Next I'll do the Inceptor Sergeant. He's also going to shoot at the Foul Blight Spawn. And we just measured to make sure, and actually the uh, Tainted Cohort are actually slightly closer to the Inceptor than the Foul Blight Spawn, so he's going to shoot at them instead. So we've got four shots hitting on fours because we advanced. Six. Sorry, six shots. Hitting on fours to advance, that's two hits. Wounding on fours, because it's from five. There's one wound. At a minus one AP. Oh, but they've got cover, so this will just be a two plus. Yeah. Next, I'll do the intercessors. They're going to shoot at the terminators. So we've got ten shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. You're rolling the ones. Nine hits. Oh, there's a two there, sorry. Eight hits. Wounding on fives, you're rolling ones, because of the lieutenant. You're rolling one. So that's two wounds, so one at AP minus one and one at AP minus two. And I don't have cover, I misspoke earlier because the Terminator's not quite within three inches. So we've got a three plus and a four plus. So three plus, yes, four plus, no. So that's one potential wound, disgustingly resilient. No, nope. that's all. So the Terminator takes a wound. And then put it on the man with the sword. So I'll do the captain next. Uh, he's got one shot from his combi bolter with just the bolt gun part because the melting gun is in range. He's going to shoot the Terminators as well, just in case I manage to take away that one wound. So we've got one shot hitting on a two, re-rolling ones, and he hit. Wounding on a five, re-rolling ones, no. And next up, the Lieutenant will do the same with his Mastercrafted Autobot rifle. We've got two shots hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, so two hits, wounding on fives. Oh, it's two wounds, so one AP minus one and one AP zero. So we'll do two plus AP zero first. Yes, and the 3 plus AP minus 1, yes. Finally, the land speeder is going to put it's going to put two crack missiles and the multi-motor into the terminators. So I'll do the multi-motor first. One shot hitting on three, rolling ones, two misses. And two missiles hitting on threes, rolling ones. Oh, one hit. Wounded on three, rolling ones. You're wounded. Yeah, four yeah. plus either way. Uh, failed it. D6 damage, one. Not going to re-roll that. Okay, so disgustingly resilient. Oh, I made it. Yeah. That's going to be it. I'm not going to declare any charges. I don't think anything I have is actually in charge range. So the Death Guard proving quite a bit harder to kill than uh, Spore and Cultus as we head into Death Guard turn two. We'll start with Lord Felthius. He's going to advance because he doesn't have any ranged weapons and he's not my warlord, so I don't care that much if he dies. And uh, he'd be a huge charge if yeah. he were to move normally. Uh, D6 but halved. He's slow. Oh, one. So he gets himself out the front and the Tainted Cohort are going to follow up, they won't advance where they are. But they can all get into cover now from the crane. Yes. Uh, we'll advance with the Foul Blight Spawn next. Ooh, six inches. Ooh. So he gets himself to there, uh, he's within range of the uh, Inceptor Sergeant, and the Plague Marines will move up normally so they can shoot, and we'll be on to the shooting phase. We'll start with the Foul Blight Spawn because he's only got one target in range. 
So strength, 2d6, 6 again, d6 hits, 4, 3s for rolling everything to wound, 2 twos. Warlord trait coming in handy, so 3 wounds, uh, but you are in cover. 3 5 plus saves, uh, if I roll a 6 on a 1 I'll take a mortal wound, no. So the interceptors are destroyed, and that'll be a victory point for the Death Guard. Well, the Plague Marines are only in range of the scouts, so we'll put everything into them. We are in rapid fire range with the plasma gun and the bolt guns, so we'll start with the plasma gun, not going to supercharge because they're only one wound. Hmm. Two, two sixes to hit. Moving on threes, two wounds. So five plus armor saves, because I've lost two from cover. Yep, they did as well. That's so another victory point for the Death Guard. Five to two now. Yeah, the two scouts are killed. And uh, that just leaves the two combi bolters on the tainted cohort, and they will shoot at the intercessors. Uh, eight shots hitting on threes. Uh, that is a lot of twos. Mm. Three hits. Wounding on fours. One. Three plus arm save. Maybe. But um, they, well, they're technically in charge range, but Lord Felthius is in the way. Yeah, and it would be a 12 anyway, so. Yeah, so I'm not going to declare any charges. So we're on to Space Marines turn three. Well, my turn isn't going to be much movement. The Intercessor Squad is just going to fall back a little bit to be slightly further away from the Terminators, but still within 15 inches of them. And Velthius. And then we're on to the shooting phase. So we might as well go big or go home. So we're going to start with the Land Speeder. It's going to put all of its guns into Lord Velthius. So we'll do the Multi Mud first. One shot hitting on a three. That's a hit. Wounding on a three, you're rolling once. You're rolling a one. Into a one. Two crack missiles hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. That's one hit. Wounded on a three. We're rolling ones. Come on, land speedo. That's a wound. I don't have cover, so this will be a four plus honorable save, which I've made. There we go. Next, I'll do the Terminator Captain. He's going to fire the melter part of his combi melter into Lord Felthius. So we've got one shot hitting on a two. We're rolling ones. That's a hit. Wounded on a three. We're rolling ones. That's another wound. Uh, next, I'll do the Intercessor Squad. They're going to shoot at Felthius as well because the Terminators have cover. So we've got ten shots hitting on threes. We're rolling ones. Rolling the ones into hits, so that's eight hits. Wounding on fives, you're rolling ones. Well, there's two at AP minus two, so that's two four plus armor saves. Do something. Oh, they're not failing. Yeah. Finally, the lieutenant's gonna have a go, he's gonna shoot Felthies as well. Two shots hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. Can re roll both of them. Alright, two hits. Wounding on fives, you're rolling ones. Nothing. And that was a very, it's gonna be the end of my turn, because I'm not gonna clear any charges. On to Death Guard turn three. Lord Feltheus and Tainted Cohort have moved up there four. They yeah, might actually be able to charge something this time. And then we'll move on to the Foul Blight Spawn, who will advance. That's three inches. And the Plague Marines will advance, because I'm not going to be able to get the Plasma Gun in range anyway. The Plague Marines advance an extra five inches. And that brings them to about there. We'll start shooting with the two Blight Launchers from the Plague Marines. They're going to go into the Land Speed, which is in range now. So four shots hitting on threes. That's three hits. Wounding on threes, re rolling everything because they're near the foul light spawns with water traits, so that's three wounds. Five plus armor saves. Didn't make any of them, so 3d3 three, three damage. Okay. Uh, that is five. So. so, yeah, that's five damage. I'm going to spend a command point to try and re roll one of these, well, one of these ones into something else. No, of course oh, not. So, as always, the land speeder survives on one wound. It's always the luckiest land speeder. So we're going to shoot the Terminator's combi bolters at it and we'll put the uh, Plague Spewer into the Intercessors because that's in range of them. We'll do the combi bolters at the Land Speeder. Eight shots on threes. That's Ooh, a bit better than the last time. <laughs> Winning on fives. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> well, we'll try the Plague Spewer at the Intercessors then. So D6 hits. All right, oh, well, six. Go. Okay, consolation prize. Winning on threes. Rerolling on ones. So that's four wounds at AP minus one. So four, four plus armor saves. Made one, so one intercessor will die and I'll take a wound. So I'll take the guy off the end and then uh, uh, this guy will take a wound. So shooting's done, on to the charge phase and Lord Felthius will charge the intercessors. And so, overwatching with our bolt rifles, we've got eight shots hitting on sixes, we're rolling ones, because the captain's here now. So that's two hits. Hitting, uh, wounding on fives, we're rolling ones. Oh, there's one wound. That's one. Oh, it saves you, sir. Made it safe. And his charge range. Five, mm, measure. Yeah, I only need to re-roll this into a two, so that's all my command points gone. And uh, there's enough, yeah. It's easy enough. So Felthius is going to come right here into the shadow of the Alchemite stack, and the Terminators are going to charge the Intercessors as well. They need a seven, which I've got. So finishing their charge like that, both the characters are within three inches of people who've charged, but the Intercessors kind of block them. And I suppose well, you might be able to sneak him around there if you want. No, he'll stay where he is. So with that, we on to the fight phase. 
We'll start with Lord Feltheus. Obviously, he has to attack the intercessors. So he has four attacks hitting on twos. That's three hits, but Death of the False Emperor on that six. So extra attack, which also hits. So they're wounding on threes, we're rolling ones. That's four wounds. Four, six plus armor saves. Made one. So the first wound going through will kill yeah, the first man. Wounded man. Wounded man will die. And then we've got D3 damage. So the first one kills another one, and the second one so there's three, so that's... Three dead intercessors. Yeah. So the three regular intercessors will die, leaving just the sergeant. And then Lord Felthius has enough movement to pile into the land speeder. And the lieutenant. And the lieutenant, but I'm not scared of him. Yeah. And then we have the terminators, who will pile into the remaining intercessor. Uh, we'll start with the axe, two attacks on threes. Two hits, wounding on threes, rerolling ones. That's a wound. So five plus armor save, which I made. Sword next, two attacks on threes. Uh, one hit, on a four. Nope. And then the man with no melee weapon, two attacks on threes. They both hit, they wound on fours. No. And you get to hit back. I'll start with the sergeant on the terminators. So you've got three attacks, hitting on threes, rerolling ones. That's three hits. Wounding on fives, rerolling ones. Nope. So the Lieutenant is actually within an inch of the Terminators, so he'll fight them instead of Felthius. Yep. So he has four attacks hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, because of the Captain, and they all hit. Wounding on fives, re-rolling ones because of himself. Two wounds. Two plus armor saves. Oh, oh. disgustingly resilient. Oh! <laughs> and finally the Land Speeder has two attacks on Lord Felthius, as the uh, crew lean out and try and punch him in the head. They both hit. Running on fives, rolling ones. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Two plus. Oh. oh. Disgusting resilient. Oh no. This moral victory. <laughs> the land speed. <laughs> the land speed of crew managed to wound Felthius. He's down to five. But well, that'll be the end of Death Guard turn three. And to Space Marines turn four. Uh, really just trying to survive at the moment. So my turn, the land speeder is going to fall back over to near this ammo box because uh, the foul blight spawn is a viable target and I don't think it's going to last much longer. Then the lieutenant is just going to fall back from Felthius and the intercessor sergeant has fallen back from the terminators. The captain's going to stay where he is. With my four remaining models, it's on to the shooting phase. So we're going to start with the important shooting. Uh, the land speeder is going to put all of its guns into the foul blight spawn because he is the closest enemy unit. So we'll start with the multi melter hitting on a four because we moved because it's a heavy weapon. I'm going to re-roll that, because we need to hit him. Nope. Two missiles hitting on a four, re-rolling ones, because of the ammo boxes. Re-rolling the one. That's a hit. Wounds on a three. Uh, of course it didn't. The intercessor sergeant's going to throw a crack grenade at the terminators. One shot hitting on a four. Re-rolling ones, because of the captain. Nope. The lieutenant will do the same. One shot hitting on a four. Nope. The terminator captain will fire his melter gun at the terminators. One shot hitting on a two. That hits. Wounds on three, rolling ones. Oh, it's a two. Right, here we go. And the charge phase, the Terminator Captain will declare a charge on the Terminators. Uh, we'll overwatch with the Plague Spear first of all. D6 hits. Six. Again. Wounding on threes. Rerolling ones. That was a hit, so that's four six, wounds. Six, four wounds. Four, three plus armor saves. Made all of them. Then we've got the Combi Barters. Six, eight shots on sixes. One. Wounding on four. It did. Two plus armor save. Made it. Charge distance is 11. So he'll just charge the guy on the end with the axe to stay away from Felthius. So we've got four attacks from the captain because he's just a regular space marine, not a Primaris. Hitting on threes, you're rolling ones. You're rolling the one. Yep, get two twos. Wounding on threes, you're rolling ones because of uh, strength high. Two four plus invulnerable saves. Maybe one third one. It's two damage from yep. the chain fist. So disgusting resilient, and this man's only got one wound left. Oh, double one. Right. So, he dies. so if you've been keeping track, that's the first model I've killed since the first turn. So the terminators get to hit back. We'll do the axe. Uh, two, oh, two hits and a death of the false emperor. For three hits. Mm -hmm. Wounding on threes. Strength five. Oh, two. Oh, wait, you've got four plus three plus invulnerable save. Yeah, so it's two three plus invulnerable saves. Made both. And then oh, the sword's dead, so it's just the man with no. The no yeah. yeah. Who has hit once. And on four. Oh, six, AP minus one. Well, three plus and horrible save. Oh no, takes a wound. Down to five. Piled in, we didn't show that, but the Terminator Captain goes down to five wounds, but that'll be the end of Space Marines turn four, on to Death Guard turn four. So in my movement phase, Felthius has moved his four whole inches closer to the remaining guys over here, and the Terminators will stay in melee. And the Foul Blight Spawn will advance, because there's no need for him to not 
he goes extra four. So that's actually enough to bring him in range of the captain, so I will actually fall back with the two tainted cohort. So yeah, they'll fall back over there, so they're more than three inches away from the captain, preventing him from intervening back. And Plague Marines will move this way towards the land speeder in case I have to charge it. So I have to do the Plague Marines first and they're shooting. Uh, they have to take out the land speeder to allow the fire block spawn to shoot to the captain, because it's currently close to the land speeder. So we'll do one blight launcher into the intercessor sergeant, all the way over there, yeah, in the back. and then everything else into the land speeder. So we'll do the one blight launcher at the intercessor first. Two wound on swaps on threes, they hit, wound on threes, uh, they wound. Five plus armor save. For both, so he dies. So yeah. a victory point for the death guard. Up to three. Then we'll do the plasma gun at the land speeder, not supercharging. On threes. Uh, one hit, wounds on a three. It did. Six plus armor save. Nope. Nope, no, but it so, might it could blow up. Uh, on a six it blows up. Nope. So it's another victory point for the death guard as it dies. Light spawn is closer to the captain, so we'll shoot him. So strength 2d6. 11. <laughs> D6 hits. Six. There we go. Wounding on twos. Rerolling. Oh, it's two ones. Oh, that's six that's wounds. Six wounds. Six, three plus invulnerable saves. Need to make five of these. Nope. That's, uh, yeah, 15 damage. So the captain dies three times over, and that'll be two victory points for the Death Guard for killing a unit and my warlord. Uh, and then that's all the shooting. We're in the charge phase. Lord Felthis will try and finish the job. Charge into the, inter into the lieutenant. Yeah. We're going to overwatch with a crack grenade. Hitting on a six. Nope. I'm not going to roll it because he's close enough. Yeah, he's definitely in. And he has his four attacks on twos. They all hit. They wound on threes. They, they all wound. Six plus. Oh, say. Oh, made one. So he might live. He might live. So 3d3 damage. No, he dies. Ooh, seven damage, so that only has five wounds. And that's all the Space Marines wiped off the board. So the Death Guard will win because the Space Marines have no mores left. Seven victory points to five. So, we'll recap that for you now. So that was the mission for issue 72 of Warhammer 40,000 Conquest. How did you think that went? Um, not at all how I thought it was going to go, given your first turn. Oh, actually, to be honest, I didn't think it went exactly how I thought it was going to go. Oh, interesting. Because of the army I took. For well, one reason, um, we hardly ever see the Inceptors anymore, uh, largely because they're overpriced. But uh, I decided to take a fast army, mainly so that you couldn't run the spawn away and hide them. Because I think if you did that, um, I just wouldn't have the time to kill them. You could just throw stuff in the way. And considering how I only killed one of your actual Death Guard models, I don't think I would have had the time to actually hunt down the spawn. Yeah. And I also wanted to not allow your spawn the chance to get into melee, because, I mean, you get a victory point for every model they kill. They only need to kill three or four, I suppose, to counteract the victory points I would have gained for killing them. Yeah, and they're not too bad in melee either. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they'll go straight through intercessors, even in scepters. I was completely expecting you know, they wouldn't kill anything in melee, though, because yeah. you start so far away, and or even with your deploying units close, I mean, I mm -hmm. knew you would be careful with that. You weren't going to yeah. give me easy kills with them. So I, I hope they might survive beyond mm -hmm. your first shooting yeah. phase, but... I mean, uh, to be honest, I didn't expect the land speeder to kill them with its shooting. Um, and I suppose in hindsight, if I knew it was going to do that, I might not. I might have taken the Dreadnought instead of the Inceptors and footstogged it up the board. But um, I did expect that when your actual Death Guard units arrived, I would struggle to deal with them. Yeah. Simply because I just didn't have the equipment. I mean, the land speeder did pretty badly. I think it only got something like two shot hits out of nine shots. But I mean, shooting at your Terminators, I don't think I'd, well, I eventually killed one. Yeah. So even though they're overpriced and they're ridiculously overpriced because you're paying for a squad of five and you only get three. Yeah, and I mean, I took the Terminators, again, partly because we don't see them very often and because they're overpriced, but also because I wanted to use that tactic, which was, well, I, I knew you were going to strike the spawn pretty hard at the beginning, mm. but then I wanted to have something I could dump on your back lines and yeah. basically so that you had something far more pressing to deal with than two spawn over on the other side of the board. And yeah, that worked quite well. I mean, it helped that you didn't roll too well and I rolled quite well, but nevertheless, the yeah. I actually picked did what I wanted it to do, which doesn't always happen. Yeah. So. As always, I forget that it's probably best to just ignore the Terminators and go away from them because they're so slow. And, um, and, and I think it still could have swung. I mean, if I'd managed to kill the Foul Blight Spawn... Well, if you'd done that, I would basically have not been able to win because... Yeah, he would have been Well, actually, draw. he was the one who finished off the captain yeah. as well. So if he'd been dead, I think you would have swung that. So yeah, I also made a deliberate choice not to have Lord Felthius as my warlord. Give me a bit more freedom to just throw him in, really. Yeah. And, and it paid off because he you didn't really do much damage to him. 
and the foul blight spawn uh, well I mean his wall of trade may have been useful I have to look back at the rolls but um, just the fact that he was at the, in the back lines with the spawn meant that your shooting units all the way on the other end yeah, of the board can't get to him can't get to him so that was very well I knew I was going to be victory points down at the beginning of the game simply because the chaos spawn and the carvists were going to go away so mm. I thought well how can I minimise the number you took I mean I, I, yeah. I suppose technically by the letter of the scenario the space marines did achieve their objectives since yeah. the whole goal was to kill the spawn I mean to be honest if, if we were sensible we would have just run away after achieving our objectives so it's a bit of a pyrrhic victory in the end it, it did it was quite funny from a sort of story point of view yeah. because the idea was these two spawn a, a figurehead for the yes. cultists and so forth on the planet and um, they immediately got blown away and the death guard turned up so, oh. yeah we're going to go come on lads we're going to go and rescue these cultists oh they're all dead so, what's, what's happened here oh well, we'll just kill all the space <laughs> yeah. marines then but yeah I mean we still don't know what spawn do I mean yeah you have to take them in another mission maybe do I really think the scenario really works against spawn because they're really meant to be an expendable cheap unit that you just throw away but here they're worth four victory points if they die so sure they get victory points if they kill stuff in melee but, it's but, not like that, but do you really so. want to want to risk I mean actually compared to other death guard units they're actually not very durable I mean they're toughness five and they have four wounds but they only have a five plus armor save they have no invulnerable save they don't even have disgustingly resilient which I think they should because they are meant to be Nurgle demon spawn mm. But you, you might well see them again because at two power each, they're quite a useful thing yeah. to fill holes in the army. They're, they're really, really cheap. Two yeah. power, they're about 25-ish points, I think, as well. Yeah. And um, I'd actually have be happier sitting one of those on an objective than I would the unit of cultists because mm. I think it'd just be hard to get rid of them. a single spawn. Certainly, certainly easier to hide it. And actually, and unlike the cultists, they can actually do some damage if they get... Yeah, they are pretty dangerous in melee, close, yeah. at least against the regular space marines. And um, I will say about that this magazine is actually quite good value as well. Kel Spawn actually £25 for a pair of them on the Games Workshop store. So getting it for a third of the price is quite good. And uh, the kit comes with an absolute ton of parts. Although if you want to convert Possessed or yeah. um, make a, chaos, a vehicle more chaosy, put mutated bits on it, you can do that. There's tons of spines and eyeballs and weird arms and stuff. Yeah, you probably have at least as many parts as are actually on the models there. Oh, uh, eat spare. So I don't think there's too much more to say about this mission and issue. So if you like this content, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, leave any comments. Uh, if you played this game, tell us how you got on, uh, what you think of the Chaos Spawn, what armies did you take, that sort of thing. We've been the Tabletop Donkeys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.